Well, what do I know here? I know that A is a positive number. I'll write it down. B is a positive number as well. A obviously is a uh, smaller positive number because the absolute value is smaller. Right? And B is absolute value is greater, so that makes it a larger positive number. Uh, we also know that B is to the right. Um, more to the right on the number line, they're made, therefore it's also greater. So we're adding two positives, so let's take care of a plus b. Well, a plus b, if I add the distance of a, the absolute value of b to the absolute value of, absolute value of a to the absolute value, of, absolute value of b, a plus b would obviously be located over here, right? So it'd be, so again, if I had another number line at the bottom, I would, that would be a, and then to that I add b. It would take me all the way here. Okay, so a plus b is that way. Uh, the second one, b minus a, b is still a positive, so it, it would be the larger uh, positive value minus the smaller uh, positive value. So to the to the absolute value of b, I'm subtracting this much over here, this distance over here. So this is b right here. But I mean, a little bit too big. Okay, so that's B, right? And then to B, what I'm going to do, I'm going to subtract, which means I'm going to go left on the number line. I'm going to subtract the value of A, which is about this much. So as you can tell, B minus A lands right here. And then A minus B, again, it would be the smaller absolute value, right? Uh, smaller absolute value here, the smaller distance. Uh, it's a positive number. So to, uh, to that, I'm going to subtract A. Uh, subtract the, the distance, the absolute value of b, which is larger than the absolute value of a. So with the absolute value of a, which is this distance over here, and if I subtract, it means um, I'm going to move decreasing value. Um, so therefore, I'm going to go to the left, and I'm going to go to the left this much, which is the distance of b, right? The absolute value of b, and therefore a minus b will land right here. All right, so, so far so good. All right, so uh, let's see if I can do it over here. So remember, you got to set this to this, right? And because there are two numbers repeating, I multiply both sides by 100. And multiplying 0 0.6363 dot 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 forever and ever allows us, that, allows us to move that decimal two over, so we actually get uh, 63, 63, 63, blah, 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 which is the same thing as 63, bar notation 63. That allows us to now subtract one equation from the other, and it also allows us to get rid of that repeating decimal, right? So I essentially have 99x, 100x minus x, 99x equals 63, divide both sides by 99 x equals 63 over 99, which I can be do, simplify, divide by, I don't know, let's try, if I divide that by 3, so it'll be 21, All right, and I can still divide that again, so it'll be 7 over 11, final answer. Okay, so 0 0.63 has a ratio of 2 integer of 7 over 11. 4, 5, 6 is the same thing. Um, this um, and in this case it's three repeating numbers so I'm going to multiply 0 0.456 456 by a thousand and that allows us to move the decimal three over and we get four point four five six dot four five six four five six so let's rewrite that so we're multiplying both sides by a thousand that's a thousand x, and up here is 456.456 EP. Again, that allows us to do this. We get 999 x equals 456, divide both sides by 999, and x equals that particular value. I have no idea if you can. Uh, you can uh, divide by 3 because 999. The sum of all the digits is 27, and the top one is sum of the, all the digits 4 plus 5 plus 6 is 15, and 15 can be divisible by 3, so you can divide that. And you know what? 
I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use my calculator. 456. Is that 999? We can simplify. And becomes 152 over 333. Okay. That's that. So you use, use a number line to show. Oops, I took away. So maybe let's use that number line to show both. Let's take a look. Uh, let's do the first one. So negative eight. Let's start a negative eight. So this is I. I want you to show negative eight. I'm adding a positive number, which means I'm going to the right. I'm increasing values. I'm going to go from here, nine units to the right, and that should take us to one. And that's exactly what I'd like to see. Okay, I know where you began and I know where you ended. Okay. Um, second one, negative three. So let's go to negative three. And now think about what this means. So you are at negative three and somebody's going to take away your debt. So uh, they're going to take six of your debt, right? Six, six of your debt. But you, don't, you only have three. But because you only have three, this is what happens. They take away three of that debt that you have. And now you have three extra to spend. Think about it that way. They took so much debt away from you. You know, they took the debt that you already that you had to begin with, and then they're gonna take a future debt. And by taking that future debt that you have, it, 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 it literally means that you have three extra to spare. So that's sorry, that should be one continuous line. That's what it should look like. Okay, and that gives you. So this one, you have the number line done for you, and I want an addition and a subtraction expression that expresses what's you know what's what's going on over here. So on the first one, well, they started at zero and went to ten, so I know it's, it starts at ten, and because I want an addition expression, I'm gonna put plus plus what? Am I increasing value or decreasing value? Obviously, I'm decreasing value because I'm going left of the number line. And how much did I decrease in value? Well. Looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven units to the left. So that's what it will look like um, as, a, as, as an addition expression. Now as a subtraction, again, same thing. I start at 10. And what is happening here? So somebody's taking away, I have 10 positives, right? So somebody's taking away seven of the positives that I have. So that's 10 minus seven. Okay, and then if you want to double check, you know, you can always um, see if this subtraction uh, problem can be rewritten as an addition problem. So it does, look, the 10 stays, right? The subtraction becomes addition, and then the second add-in, which is a positive 7, now becomes negative 7. So they are correct. Bottom one, let's see, as an addition, uh, is there a number line? So it's um, where am I? So we start at negative four, and we want an addition expression. So I have to put a plus there. So now it's a matter of am I adding a positive integer or a negative integer? Well, obviously it's going to be a positive because I'm going right. How many units do we go right? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then, and that gives me the answer of positive two. Sorry, positive two. As a subtraction expression, well, I still start at negative 4. And then what am I subtracting here? Well, somebody, so think about this again, right? As a previous example, you are at negative 4, and somebody's going to come in and take away all your debt, all your negatives, right? So they took all your four negatives, plus they took two future negatives that you still haven't spent, which literally means that you have two, two extra dollars uh, because they took away more debt than you had. So they took away negative six, and that again gives you two. Okay, and as you can tell, you can double check negative four is negative four, subtraction becomes addition, and opposite of negative six is six. So they are exactly the same. Seven.
determine if it's true or false. If true, provide an example that explains why it's true, and if false, give a counterexample to explain why it's false. All right. So, saying that m is a negative number, okay, so m is a negative number, and w is a positive, okay, then m minus w is always positive. So let me write here: m is negative, and w is positive. So n minus w is always positive. Let's pick an example. So let's take a negative number, negative 5, minus a positive, uh, I don't know, 3. What is the answer? Negative 8. Let me pick another one, negative 10. Let me pick a, a large positive number, 100. What's my answer? Negative 110. So if m is, n, if negative if m, uh, if m is a negative integer, which here it is, and w is a positive integer, so this is definitely true. The answer is always positive. No, sorry, what am I doing? The, the answer is always negative. So, oops. Please wait. This is false because the answer will always be negative. So think about it. Let me do it on a number line. So if you are, let's just say you're at one, right? At negative one. And if you subtract, subtract, somebody's gonna take away from you. And what are they taking? They're taking away a positive from you. So they're taking something that you have, a positive. If they take away a positive from you, it means that you're always going to be going left. So a negative minus a positive integer, and again, you can try a, a lot of a lot of these uh, examples. Um, create your own examples, a lot of your own examples, and you'll see that you end up always being negative. So this is false, and you can provide one, two, three, four examples. You can say, Mr. Cho, here's another one. Um, negative four minus I don't know. Let's pick a very small positive number, zero point zero 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 one. Do I still go? Does it still become? Is, is my answer still negative? Well, here I am on negative 4. Right? If somebody's coming to me and taking away this much from me, and if they take away that much from me, I become a tiny little bit more poorer, but I'm still going left. Right? So no matter what, um, my number becomes even less. So this is... The statement is not true, it should have been negative, and here are my proofs. Let's see, if c is an integer, then negative, so c is an integer, negative c to the third power is always negative. Well, let's pick a positive integer, let's pick 5, and let's substitute over there. If, if c equals 5, which is a positive integer, let's substitute. Remember, there's no parentheses here, so that 3 only affects the 5, so the minus sign stays, and the 5 to the third power is 125. So if it's positive, it ends up being negative. So far, we're good. What if it's, what if C is a negative number? Let's say negative 2. Pick an easy, easy one. So C is negative 2. Let me write this again. Let me write it over here. And then let's replace the c with negative 2. So that minus was already there. I'm taking the c out, and I'm going to replace it with negative 2 and take it to the third power. Well, negative 2 to the third power is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is negative 8. And then don't forget that there's that minus sign outside, and that negative is not negative. It makes it go positive. So here is an example where c is an integer, right? And is it is the answer negative? No, the answer is positive. So this is also false. And then you would provide me with an example that explains why it's, why it's false. And there's an example. So when c is a negative number, a negative integer, it's not negative. It actually is positive. All right. So you actually have to figure this out and show the and show the expression we used to get to the so this is one of the, the final change and start. So you gotta figure out what you have so that you can determine which of the relationships you want to use. So by the time he landed in Oslo, the temperature had risen by 15 degrees. So 
I know so the change is 15 and I know it's positive y because it has risen it went up uh, to chilly temperature with negative 4 so it went up and the final temperature right is negative 4 so what was the temperature when he took off so obviously we want the starting temperature so remember final equals start plus change and then what else can we say we want to start so start is final minus change All right so that's the one we're looking for so starting equals final which is negative 4 minus the change which is 15 and negative 4 plus negative 15 and I change the subtraction problem to addition and I get that the starting temperature was negative 19 so that makes sense it was negative 19 temperature up by 15 degrees it's still cold but a little bit less cold so right so the starting temperature was negative 19. Uh, let's see what else the bottom one same thing same type of situation winter break so chill drives drives dives with bull sharks is at 60 feet below sea level so here is zero here's me at negative 60 he ascends which means I go up 48 feet so you can say that my starting point is a negative 60 I go up so this is the change right ascends means up so I'm gonna add to that I add 48 All right so what am I looking for I'm looking for my new position right here so I want to find a position so in this case it is actually final equals start plus change and we can put it right here so that my final position in the water is the starting temp starting starting um, what do you call starting location which is negative 60 I go up 48 and obviously I'm still underwater but I'm at negative 12 feet okay so I need that expression here All right, so if you just write negative 12 you'll get zero credits I'm not giving you it has to come with this. Okay. As you can tell, it's pretty it's straightforward. Uh, let me do the ten, let me do ten, and then I'll come back to nine. Okay. So we want to prove that a negative five times negative two is positive ten. A negative times a negative is a positive. So one of the things we talked about is that we can use number properties, right? And we know a number property that says any number multiplied by zero equals zero so hang on a second so we're gonna set that set that set this to equal zero right I'm gonna use this relationship um, to come back and uh, explain why a negative times a negative so let's set it to zero and in order to set it to zero this needs to happen we're gonna have to change a couple of things if I set it to zero the inside has to be negative 2 plus 2. So let's. Right? So if I set it to 0, right, I'm going to change this and I'm going to use negative 2. Um, so, so far, uh, I haven't changed any values. So I just replaced with 0. 0 is negative 2 plus 2 is the same thing. Now I can use the distributive property to start explaining why a negative times a negative is positive. So we, here, the first distribution, we get negative 2 times negative 5 times negative 2, and then plus negative 5, sorry, times 2 equals 0. Now this part we can explain very easily. Negative 5 times 2 is the same thing as two groups of negative 5 being added. So negative 5 plus negative 5 is negative 10. So that's easy to explain and we talked about that in class. Now this, now using logic, right, in order for this statement to uh, still be true, to equal 0, the only way that's going to happen if it's, if, if it is if negative 5 times negative 2 equals 10. By equaling 10, this statement becomes stays true because it has to be equal to zero so here's your proof and you can take this and come back and say therefore you know negative five times negative two equals ten you know just by using logic right 
Um, this one is the same thing. So we're going to set this negative 6 equals 0. Negative 6 times 0 equals 0. I'm going to use instead of 0, we're going to replace that 0 value with negative 3 plus 3, which is the same thing. All right, negative 3 plus 3 is equal to 0. So again, distributed property. Um, in this case, let's see, well, that's still zero. So in this case, well, in this case, well, we can say that, let me multiply actually this out first. And on this case, let me multiply this times three. So you can argue with me and say that we were taking three groups of negative 6 plus negative 6 plus negative 6, which equals negative 18. And then here, uh, again, by logic, the only number that can make this equation true is if it's negative 6 times negative 3 is positive 18. Right? So uh, I think with a positive times a negative or a negative times a positive, you might even just go, you, you, can, you, you might even just say, hey, I can go and say that there are, it's negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, sorry, let me clean this up. Okay, so it would be even easier if you use negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3, and that all equals negative 18, right? Because 6 times negative 3, I'm going further and further and further to the left of the number line because I keep adding negative 3 to my value. Uh, remember that multiplication is re repeated addition, right? So if you use this, that's fine with me too. Okay. All right, now the ones that hmm, might, yeah, they're not that difficult. See if I can do this. I'm going to substitute. Let's do the easy ones first. Uh, y minus z, y is negative 4, minus, and z is negative 5. So that's how I would write it. Remember, if I could just take out the y, right, we're going to replace it. Take the y and replace it with exactly the value. So keep them better than put parentheses here. So every time you have a negative number, I would. Put parentheses. So this becomes negative 4 minus negative 5, which you can rewrite as an addition problem. And then obviously the answer is 1. y plus z, y is negative 4, again put in parentheses, plus and z is negative 5. Now we're going further to the left, so this is just negative 5. Uh, z minus y, so again let's substitute, and that's I think is the most difficult part substitution. Z is negative 5, so let me write negative 5 in parentheses. Minus, and Y is negative 4, over X plus 5, X is 3, plus 5. Okay, so we're going to have to find, uh, evaluate all the all these numbers inside and then take the absolute value. Don't need to rush here. We can do the bottom, it's easy, 3 plus 5 is 8. On the top is negative 5 minus negative 4. I'll just take that, pull it out to the side, minus negative 4. You can change it to an addition, which I am, and that gives you negative 1. So, now, that says the absolute value of the fraction negative 1 over 8. So, if you think about it, this is what it means. Uh, let's say that this is 0, that's 1, so that's 1. Make 1 a little further. That's one positive, negative one negative, negative one eighth. Okay, so uh, uh, negative one eighth about here. How far is the distance from negative one eighth to zero? So the absolute value of negative one eighth is just one over eight. Okay, and that's your answer. Uh, y, y times z. Uh, y times z, y times z, y is negative 4, parentheses, z is negative 5, over x, which is 3, minus 1. And this one's a little simpler. So on the top, 
negative times a negative is a positive, 4 times 5 is 20. At the bottom, 3 minus 1 is 2, we can simplify that and get 10. Okay. Um, I don't know why y is in parentheses, but well, let's put in parentheses. So it's negative 4 to the second power plus 2 times negative 4, and I'll put in parentheses again, minus negative 4. Ugh. So negative 4 to the second power is 16, plus 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And then here we have minus negative 4. I'm going to leave that like that for a second. Take care of these two. 16 plus negative 8 is just 8. Then minus negative 4, which changes to 8 plus 4. And the final answer is 12. Substitution, it's minus. That's already part, part of the expression. So, And then x to the third power. x is not negative, so I'm not going to put a parenthesis. So third power minus 4 times y, which is negative 4, times z, which is negative 5. Now, remember, so the minus sign, um, 3 to the third power is 27, and then minus the product of all these two, all these three numbers. So let me put that in a rectangle. So I know it's 4 times, well, first of all, it's going to be a positive answer, because these two negatives become a positive, and that positive times the 4 becomes a positive. Whatever it is, it's going to be positive. So 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 5 is 80, so the whole thing becomes 80. Negative 27 plus negative 80. We're going further left on the number line, final answer is negative 27. Okay? And that's that.